Today we're making this cute snowman teapot. Stay tuned and see how fun and easy this project is. All right, since this is our first teapot in the series, it's going to take me a few months to get my process exactly down. But right now, I think I know what I'm doing this month. So we're making, like you saw in the intro, a snowman teapot, and this will be an ongoing thing. We're gonna add a teapot to each of our monthly collections that we've started. Like last year at this time, we did a snowman cookie jar. Now, unlike the cookie jar, our teapots will not open. And they're, it's not gonna perfectly match our Cookie jar, it's not gonna be the same color family. It's going to be as if someone, as if our doll person, our person in our kitchen of our dollhouse just collects snowmen or collects cactuses or whatever for that time of year. So I've got a ball of white clay. Now when you're working with white clay, everything has to be completely clean because white clay picks up everything. This ball of clay is, it's, like this one's a little too big. It needs to be just under a half inch at this point. Because what we are going to do, we're going to take our ball that's just under a half inch and we're going to smush it down until it's about a quarter inch tall. Like that. And now this needs to bake at the temperature that your clay suggests for 15 minutes. At the end of 15 minutes, it will need to cool down completely to room temperature because we're gonna start adding parts and we can't add any, we can't use our liquid clay on warm clay. It has to be room temperature. So I'm gonna fiddle and make sure I've got this exactly the shape I want. I want kind of a, a flattened ball. And when it's baked and cooled, I'll come back and we can start adding the other parts to our teapot. All right, our main part of our teapot is baked and cooled, and I've got black clay all over my fingers because I prepped my black clay. It's just some plain black polymer clay. Now I've got three pieces. I've got a little ball here that's about a quarter inch in diameter. I have a little snake that's approximately a quarter inch in diameter, and then I have a little tiny bit. Now this little snake, I am gonna cut off a piece that's in the neighborhood of a quarter inch. It doesn't have to be exact. That's a little short, so I'm going to use this. I got that a little too short. That's better. Now, make sure this is rounded. Kind of flatten it. Make sure it looks the way you want it to. This is his hat. This quarter inch ball. My opinion, a snowman's hat doesn't have to be perfect because he's a snowman. He probably, his hat was probably something that was a discard that somebody gave him. Somebody put on their snowman. So I'm just using my finger and pressing that out to be a flat piece. And now I'm gonna put some liquid clay. We always use liquid clay when we're adhering raw clay to anything that is not raw clay. Using my clay knife to lift that up and place it. And normally I don't use raw, um, liquid clay to attach raw clay to raw clay, but I'm going to in this case because I don't want to push too hard. Uh, I don't want to distort this. So now we've got the brim of our hat and if that shows when we're done, we can always touch it up. Now I've got a dotting tool going to make a little divot, pick up just a little bit more liquid clay because these pieces are going to be kind of fragile if we don't. That little tiny ball of clay that is going on the top. And now let's see if I can set this sideways so you guys can see it. There will be a picture of the other one I'm making on the blog post. There you go. So now this needs to bake at the recommended temperature for 10 minutes while You've got your clay in the oven, clean everything. Clean your knife, clean your tools, clean your board, clean your hands because we're gonna work with white clay again. We don't want any residue of black clay anywhere where we might get our white clay. So I will be back when that is baked and cooled and I have everything clean.
All right, this is how far we've gotten. He's all baked and cooled. And there's a little white showing. That's okay. We can touch it up. When we paint the face on, we'll have out black paint. We can just touch that up. So now I have just a very small snake of white clay. I'm going to make it a little shorter. And this is where you can add some personality to your teapot. Uh, it's up to you how big you make this. Now take that cut end, keep track of that, because we're going to put the other end against our teapot. So I'm going to put my spout and try to make sure I'm under camera, but also I've got to watch what I'm doing. So a little dab of our liquid clay. Then take that. This is the end I just cut, so I'm going to take the other end, put it against here, and use my finger to smoosh it in, to smooth it off. And then I'm going to curve it. And how much curve and what shape you make this is up to you. This is part of where each teapot is a different style. I'm just using I have a smaller dotting tool. There's one. That's what that is. And now we're going to bake it again. Now we're baking between each addition because I don't want to misshape anything and excuse the noise they're plowing the snow out of the parking lot. So I'll be back when this is baked and cooled and hopefully the dude with the backhoe is gone. All right, our, our spout has cooked, has baked, cooled, and now we are ready to work on a handle. So I have just some red clay here, and I don't know if it's really showing. I've got my little clay tool here, and it's got texture. I know X-Acto knives a lot of times have texture. I'm going to call the texture totally optional. I don't know that it's really showing up, um, but I wanted to make it not just smooth clay. So that's just a, a tiniest hint of texture, totally optional. Now, I've got my liquid clay, and I'm going to go straight across from the spout. And I'm going to spread some liquid clay right there. Take this handle, put it so it's pointing up, Press that end in to the liquid clay. Bring this around and make the shape handle you want. Um, your handle can be whatever shape you want. And that, again, is something that adds character to your teapot. A little too long. We are going to wrap a scarf around the bottom of this on our next step so it will need to be able to wrap around the bottom so that's how my handle's going to look i am going to bake this at for 10 minutes again once it's baked and cooled i'll come back and we will add the scarf to the bottom of the teapot all right we are baked and cooled so now we're going to add a little red trim around the bottom it's supposed to represent the scarf i think um so i've got a snake of red clay and I've got more liquid clay. It doesn't take much. Now, one thing to be make note of here. This red clay is going to stain everything around it. And because we're adding liquid clay to it, we, we could very potentially stain the front of our teapot, the white surface. But we can come back after we get this all done, and we can add a a layer of white paint if we need to clean up the white portion of our snowman. All right, now I'm going to run this right around the bottom. Actually, I'm going to lay it down because I find I have better luck if it's sitting down on my tray. Because yeah, we can we can always. Um, do a touch up on our paint if we need to. And now I've got my same tool and I'm actually going to kind of texture that right in place. I tried, I'm actually doing two of these at once, which she'll notice 
the pictures on the blog post will be the other one. And that's pretty common when I'm doing these. a lot of these. I will try to do two at the same time, one to take pictures of, one to do video. And I actually like the other one better. <laughs> and I did learn from it that I do want to texture this once it's in place. Now I'm going to set this down, make sure that's going all the way to my tile. Now because there could be liquid polymer clay on the bottom, be sure that you bake this on top of a piece of parchment paper or something like that where it won't stick. So we're going to bake this and when it's baked we'll start getting a finish on it. So I'll be right back. All right, in preparation for painting our face, we are going to actually do a little touch up because there's a few spots on my white clay that I'm not really happy about. And then I had that little spillage of the um, liquid white clay. So we're going to take care of that. We've got some craft paint here. I'll do the white on camera. I'll do the black off camera because we all know how to paint. So just do a very light coat on the white, trying to keep it off the other colors. But hey, if you get it on the other colors, you can touch those up too. So I am going to touch the colors up. Just make sure they look, the white looks nice and white, white, and then, and that black is covered so it doesn't show where I had to fasten that hat, top of the hat onto the hat. And when the paint is all dry, I will be back and we'll go to the next step. All right, our touch up paint has dried. So now I'm going to attach our teapot to a, it's just a chunk of a craft stick with some of that blue, um, um, blue poster tack on it. I do want to make it so he's not sticking down all the way. And now we are going to seal him with a light coat of matte Mod Podge. I want to use a coat of matte Mod Podge to seal. Everything is porous right now. If we start painting on our face, because we're going to put a face on the side of this guy. If I was to start doing that and make a mistake, it would be really difficult to get that wiped up. But with a coat of matte Mod Podge, if I keep a little dish of water and um, some cotton swabs right next to me, if I make an error in doing the face on here, I can basically erase it. So I'm going to get this coated when this is dry and give it plenty of time to dry so that it will be durable and you can wipe it off. Then we'll be back and we'll start painting the face on our little snowman. I'll be right back. All right, my matte Mod Podge has dried actually overnight. So I know it's cured all the way. I know I won't be damaging my finish that's already on there. And I've got my pointy tool that I use for clay and I've got some black craft paint here. And I need to make just a little, some little dots. But I've got that, I've got my water and my cotton swabs off to the side, just in case I'm not happy, I can wash this off. All right, I'm gonna let this dry all the way because while I'm happy with this part, I want to make sure I don't damage it then if I have to erase the next step. It, craft paint only takes about 10 minutes to get dry enough that we can move on. So I'll be back in just a little bit. All right, my little, tr my little coal mouth pieces have uh, dried all the way. So now I've got a dotting tool and I've got some orange craft paint. And I'm going to very carefully a dot orange. I'm going to use the smaller end of my my dotting tool to just make a carrot shape. And now this is going to dry. Once this is dry, we'll come back and we will add some eyes and some cute little cheeks. All right, our little carrot nose is dry, and now I have just a little bit of pink. And I have a larger dotting tool. Where's the camera? There's the camera. So I'm going to dot that in there. I'm actually going to dot that off on my tray. And right at each end of the little charcoal 
um, pieces for his mouth. Then I have the black back, and I'm actually going to wipe that same bigger dotting tool off. There we go. And there is our, sand, our snowman's face. So I'm going to let this dry, and then we can give him a final clear coat. So I'll be right back. All right, now that you have the face all done and the paint is completely dry, we have some satin Mod Podge and a brush. As I mentioned earlier, all the paints and the brushes and, well, the brush, I'm only using the one brush, um, were provided by Plaid. So thank you, Plaid, for doing that. And remember, when you're putting on Mod Podge onto anything, but especially polymer clay, a light, even coat. Because if it's too thick, it can remain sticky. And this is our last coat, so we need this our final finish, so we need to have it cure correctly. So I'm going to go ahead and get this nicely spread. No big, thick areas. And when it's dry, we'll take a look at not only the one I made on camera, but the one I made off camera, which during the filming of the video, I may have switched back and forth between the two, so I'll show you both of them side by side at the end of the video. So I'll be right back. All right, here are both of the little snowman teapots I made for today's video. One I made off camera, one I made on camera. I may have switched back and forth a couple of times. I'm not exactly sure. Uh, <laughs> I love how they both turned out. They have their own little personalities. They're, they're very cute, and I think they will be adorable in a snowman-themed kitchen scene, or who knows where they'll show up. I hope you enjoyed today's video. If you did, hit the like button. Leave me a comment. What kinds of things would you like to see in our collections and what other themes would you like to see me tackle? If you enjoy my content and haven't subscribed, hit that subscription button and notification bell so you know when I put up a new video. Thank you very much for watching today and I will talk to you next time. Bye.